Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. Hope you're well, hope you're still enjoying your Monday and uh, you're still looking forward to the game later on tonight. Um, I am recording this a few hours before the game, so nothing about team news or team sheets are coming out or anything like that. Um, I did do a preview earlier, which I did release, so please go back, have a little watch that, see what you think, let me know what you think about the game tonight. Um, but I did promise transfers, I did promise an update and some interesting updates around transfers, so... You know, we're going to be talking about a brand new little bit of interest into a Spanish under-21 under, under 21 international, Javi Guerra. We're also going to be talking around the fact that Spurs sent scouts to watch a Galatasaray player. I'll be talking about in a second. And also we have an update on the valuation that Crystal Palace have for left centre-back Mark Gway. So plenty to get into, plenty to talk about. So I'm going to start with the Javi Guerra information that came out uh, came out yesterday, actually. <clears throat> and it says that uh, this comes from Graham Bailey and Sean Walsh of 90 Minute Football, who put out Tottenham Hotspur are among the clubs to have watched Valencia midfielder Javi Guerra in recent weeks. The 20-year-old is enjoying a fine breakthrough season with his hometown club so far, scoring three goals and adding one assist in nine La Liga matches. So, let me do a deep dive into Javi Guerra, physical stats, you know, contract, all that stuff first. And then I'll talk through the sort of player that he is to give you an understanding on that front. So, Javi Guerra is a Spanish under-21 international, as well as a Valencia midfielder. He's 20 years old. He, he turned 20 years old on May 13th. So, you know, definitely someone that's a lot, lot my junior. Um... In terms of contract, expires in the summer of 2027 and sort of transfer market valued him on October 13th at 20 million euros, where I think he'd probably, by the end of the season, be worth a little bit more than that, if I'm honest. Um, yeah, I went through the fact that he's appeared nine times, scored three goals, getting one assist, and that's from the central midfield area. On Javi Guerra, but what, I, I watched a, I watched some clips on him and things like that. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say I'll watch Valencia week in, week out, because I don't. I really don't. I probably haven't watched a ton of Valencia in the last few years as well. Um, I know with Valencia, they've always had financial issues for a very long time. They seem to bring players through the youth setup, have them for a couple of years, move them on. See David Villa, see David Silva, see Juan Mata. Javi Guerra seems to be like the next main guy coming through because I was watching him and I'm so impressed with him as a player. The way I'm going to describe him is he reminds me a little bit like a Rodrigo Bentancur, okay? Probably not as finesse, whereas Bentancur can play quite sort of in, in, in difficult spots, but he definitely is someone that can drive the ball very well. He always tries to progress the ball as well, which is going to be massive in an Ange system. Uh, loves to switch to play, definitely finds players in space. Has a great, he has a great ability to put the right amount on the ball. And what I mean is that is that he, do, he doesn't play a through ball and it sort of goes in behind or goes too far ahead of the player. It just seems to be about right, so it doesn't, so the player doesn't break their stride. The other thing I think about, he he's also quite press resistant. You can see a ton of clips where he gets the ball, he's surrounded, and he just gets through. He finds the pass. I'm quite impressed by that, but I'm also quite impressed with how physical he is. He's quite a large centre midfielder. That's why I say he's so much like Benson Cole, because Benson Cole's not exactly your five foot eight, five foot nine midfielder. He's quite physical, okay, I can't lie. I was quite impressed by that. That was the thing I, that and the press resistance are the two things I'm most impressed by. The physicality and the fact that you can play a ball into him and think he'll come through this. A bit like Basuma in a way, where you know you part we get the ball into Basuma and when yeah, he might give away every now and then, but we're not terribly worried when he has the ball. You know, you'd, you'd be terribly worried if I had the ball. You'd think, God, we're going to get rid of it, kick it into Rose Ed, and we'd probably kick it into Rose C, maybe, at maximum. But on Javi, you definitely don't get that. So, eh, very interesting. I mean, look, he's going to have a ton of suitors this summer. He really is. And I know, like I said, Valencia do normally sell on their players, but he's not going to be going cheap. He's not going to go for 20 million euros or transfer market value amount. I think by the end of the season, he might be worth about double that, to be honest. Um, but yeah, looks a, looks a very interesting player. So yeah, that's just a little bit on Javi Guerra. So let me talk now a little bit around the fact that we're scouting a Galatasaray player. And I've talked about him before. If you've gone back and watched the video, 
well, if you've watched the video before, if you haven't, please go back. I talked about the, the player as the player that he is. I'm not going to talk about it in this video. But this comes from Milliet, who put out that Tottenham scouts have been in attendance for the Kerem Art, uh, for, for the winger Kerem Artakoglu for Galatasaray against Besiktas. That was at the weekend. Uh, he'll, they'll also be present to watch him in the Champions League game against Bayern Munich, which I think those are really two good bits of football that we that they're going to see him in. A Besiktas, where it's a hostile game, you know, it's a big game in Turkey. It's one of the biggest games in Turkey. To also playing against a top European giant and how you handle that. Do you, do you shrink? Do you grow into the game? Do you show yourself to be a player that can play on the big stage? I, I, I like what I've seen of Artikoglu so far. I mean, obviously, the Turkish League is the Turkish League. We know that. Davos and Sanchez has gone there and done fairly well. But also... He's playing against Man United. He's going to play against Bayern Munich twice. He's going to be on the big stage a couple of times. You know, you may not think highly of Manchester United as a team right now, but you know, you can't sit there and say they're not. They're not a team that when you play them, you don't feel like you're on the big stage. They're still one of the biggest clubs in the world. You know, a lot of eyes go on them. You know, good or bad. And Artur Koglu, I definitely think we're going to see a lot more of on the world stage this year. And I'm interested to see what we what we have there. I mean, look, don't worry, I'm not saying that we're going to get him or I'm not going to say we're going to have Higuera. But what I'm saying is, I don't, it's difficult. Do you go for him in January or do you go for him in the summer? In the summer, obviously, you have the, uh, obviously, they have taught the big, big European tournament that we have in the Euros. But also, that is all, that's a shop window for every player. They want to play well in the Euros, think about getting a big move, ahead of the next season that's coming along. A lot of players don't intentionally want to move in January because obviously it might ruin their flow into that tournament in the summer. But it'd be something I think, you know, like a Javi Guerra, if you truly want him, I don't know if it's the summer he will still be there. Same with Arthur Cockley. You don't know if he's just going to really be there or if he is going to be there, how long are this list of suitors that he's going to be there for, you know? But definitely two players, if we were to get either of them, I'd be very happy. Do I think we get either of them? Time will tell. It's difficult. I'm going, be, I'm going to be a fence sitter. One player who I don't think we will go for is actually Crystal Palace centre-half Mark Gway. So this comes from Ekrem Kunur, who put out that Crystal Palace would accept a £60 million bid for Mark Gway. Newcastle United, Arsenal, Tottenham and Manchester United are interested in the English defender. Um, a few points with Mark Gway. Now, one, I'm going to stress this first and foremost. I do not think Mark is a bad defender whatsoever. I think he's a good defender. Secondly, I can't see Spurs spending £60 million on a player in a position where we don't actually need the starter because we're very happy with the two that we have. Why would we spend £60 million on that guy that's going to sit on the bench and maybe not play very much? You see what I mean on that front? I think that's kind of, you can see where I'm going with that. Uh, and thirdly, when I look at the list of teams that want him, the only way maybe an Arsenal go of him is, is if they move a Gabriel, right? Well, they move a centre half where they then have to bring someone in. <clears throat> I don't, you know, if they if they brought Mark Gray in behind all those guys, I don't see him starting. You know, Ben White had to find his position out of right back, and he's a centre half by trade. You know, on Newcastle, I think Sven Botman and Fabian Shaw have been absolutely fantastic. I mean, they're one of the best defences in the world last season. You know, when you think of Manchester United, they've got financial fair play difficulties. They've also got the fact that they've got Rafa Varane and Lissandro Martinez, who are a good partnership. Last year, they were one of the best defences in the league. I think it was like 17 clean sheets for Manchester United last year. Will he be starting there? You know, you also still got players like Harry Maguire at the club. You know, he's you know, big, he's one of the big name signings in terms of value. I'm not saying of, in terms of player, but in terms of value. So I don't, I don't, I think Mark Gray is in an interesting position where I think he, that's where he's going to be. Crystal Palace. You know, maybe, uh, trying to think, you know, maybe if a, a player moves on from one of those clubs, potentially, you know, you know, Man City aren't going to be in there, you know, Liverpool, doubt it. Van, Van Dijk plays in that position, you know, and they're not going to want to spend 60 million on a player that's not going to be playing all the time. And that's the key point. I think, you know, he's great where he is. But I don't see anyone pay, wanting to pay £60 million for him. Not at all. Not in my opinion. So, But we'll see. Football is a fickle old place and a weird old place. 
But anyway, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, hit me in the like button. In the comment section below, let me know what you think about, obviously, the Mark Gray that like I've just talked about. Do you think Spurs might go in there for 60 million? If not, who else do you think we might go for? And um, don't be telling me Per Scherz because he ruptured his ACL. I found that out the other day, or, or today, I think it was, actually. Um, obviously, you've got the situation around Kerem Artakoglu. Let me know what you think about the fact that we're scouting him ahead of, obviously, not only the weekend that's just been, but the Champions League game coming through there as well. And let me know what you think about Javi Guerra. If you haven't watched him, go back and have a little watch of his videos. Not his videos, but the videos that you can find of him. Very interesting player. Very exciting talent. Subscribe to the channel if you are new and hit the bell notification for more. Um, obviously, I'll have a match review out of the Fulham game. So this is obviously recorded ahead of schedule. So hopefully win. And hopefully you see me with another smile on my face. And we're back to top of the league. But anyway, guys, that's the end of the video. I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, guys.